Okay, this is what we're doing today. After rebuilding these filters, we're going to put them back into the canisters, which are located between the battery and the pump. That's canister number one, and to the rear of that is canister number two. Now what you should do is mark everything as canister one and canister two. Now that these paper cartridges have been replaced, I want to tell you other complications about working in the Philippines that were not, and, and things that should be readily available but are not. Number one is Loctite, which you don't need for this job, but it's a mechanical product that most people use. The second thing is not available in the Philippines. I went to five stores to replace this damaged cartridge filter. It's not an O-ring, it's a box ring. And you can see it's damaged. I could not find this ring, and I needed two of them. One is completely broke apart. One was snapped in half. So I, I used um, Teflon tape and wrapped it around it. And I'm just going to shove it back down into the, into the lip. And it should work. But being that this is a new filter, there won't be any pressure on this seal. Another thing that you should keep in mind is that when you take these filters apart, inside here is an O-ring. You can take that O-ring out with a dental pick and that poppet valve slips into this hole and slides up a little bit further like that. Remember to check to make sure you put the O-ring back in on the poppet valves. Both of them are there. You put the poppet valve in. And now I'm going to leave this one out because I'm going to show you the inside, the paper cartridge. I utilized epoxy to hold the inner screen in. And at the bottom here, there is no inner screen because the poppet valve is the correct size same diameter as the inside paper filter. So down in the bottom where you see the screen basket start, the poppet valve meets up against the bottom of the inner screen basket. So you, the o-ring is there, put the poppet valve in and push it down. Then this filter, another thing you should do is you keep your nuts and washers. I take them and I blow them off with a high pressure blow, high pressure air. But I keep them together so I don't, um, I'm not looking for a washer and a nut. And they come off washer, nut, washer, nut, washer, nut. Now I'll use an air ratchet and I'll put the basket in, but you're not going to see the whole, well, I guess I could. Um, Daisy, uh, you come over here, honey. Daisy is my assistant. My guapa. Okay. Guapa assistant. Okay, so you put your hat back on because the sun's going to be around this corner any minute. Okay, you're going to stand right about where you are. And we're going to, you're going to watch... You're going to come on behind me, because that's a good sp spot to be. You're going to hold it so that we can see the bottom mm. and the top of the filter and the back counterweight of the machine and one battery. Mm. Okay, so just about that. Okay? Yeah. Right, let's try that. And I'll show you how to put the filters in. You have your hand through yeah. Very nice. Now, if you hold it just like down a little bit like that. See the top edge of the the track? Right there, right at the top edge. Beautiful. Just that you can have the yellow bar in there. Okay, so we also have the cartridge the tops. Now there's an O-ring on here also. 
no. that I couldn't. Oh, there's an O-ring on here also that could not be replaced. So what I did is I put again Teflon tape around the O-ring to make the seal, and this works just fine. So the first step before I get oil all over the place is you want to get the 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 number one. You want to get the number one cap on, and the number one. This is the number one, and it's marked for the front. You want to get the number one on before you try to put the number two on for two reasons. One, <clears throat> it's you're going to be if you're working over the number one canister, and there's no top on the canister, you can drop a nut or a washer or a bolt or dirt or sand or something in there. So if you get this one on first, you can work over it without dropping anything in. So the first thing you need to do is you find the number one. This is the number one basket. Everything is together. And you put the number one basket in, and then we're going to load it. We're going to preload it with clean hydraulic fluid. So the basket just goes in the top here. Yeah, there's a, I have a handle on the top here so that you can hold it like that. The basket is going to go in the top here, and it's a tight fit. Okay, and then when it gets down to the O-ring that's covered with Teflon tape, there's some small resistance. You just push it down with your finger like that on both sides, and that's it. The second thing we're going to do is I'm going to put a fresh layer of Teflon tape around this cartridge cap or basket cap. It doesn't have to be a lot because there was already previously on there. So three layers and just wrap it on there like that. Three layers and that part is done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take clean hydraulic oil and fill the basket up. Now, being that I put the cap on and I, I pushed it down, it won't allow the fluid to go into the basket. So you have to pull this cartridge back up a little bit, just about a half inch, and pour the fluid into the chamber. Now, if you get it full right to the top, it's better than not getting it full to the top because preloading it stops what is called cavitation. Cavitation is when the pump sucks air. It's better to not have cavitation when you're reinstalling an oil filter or a hydraulic filter. So you preload it. This is called preloading. Okay, now this takes about three quarters of a gallon because not only is this chamber filling up, but the, the hose to the level of the hose is also filling up. Now if you don't fill it right to the top, that's okay. Okay, where we are at right there is just fine. It's right, it's, it's a half inch, set this down like this, set it down, always have rags available to wipe the oil off at each stage of your project, line up your hole with the number one, and hold it vertical over the top, and just let it slip down onto the filter. Okay, now we're going to take four nuts and four washers. One set of wash, one washer, one nut. Two, right off, two, washer nut. Saves time if you have them on this wire because you just take it off, washer nut. Washer nut. As a jet mechanic, this is how I would imagine it would say to do the job in the manual. Okay, now you make sure I already wiped off the top surface. 
Now we're going to take this air ratchet and, uh, and put the air ratchet on. We're going to put it in forward. Make, make sure it's in the forward position. But you're going to go down, you're going to go one, you're going to go crisscross like an X. One, and then the back, front right, back left, front left, back right. And you're going to bring it down, you're going to walk it down slow. Now you don't have to go on the four corners with something like this because there's so much meat on the cap, it's going to set flat. Okay, now you go back. You don't have to worry about cocking the cap. Now it matters to bring them down little by little. Now this air ratchet doesn't have much torque to it. So I use a 24 inch breaker bar with the same size socket. And I, I, it, you don't need a click torque wrench for this. I just bring in another quarter turn. The, the lock washer, I did not change the lock washer. Probably the lock washer is the original lock washer that came with the machine. But that's how the install, how to install a hydraulic filter. Now, when you take the fluid out of the, no, not, no, no, back over there. Back right the same place. I'm going to put the mm. oil pan down here. Mm. When you take the oil out of the canister, it's going to fall down. So I use a, an old pizza box with a shiny surface, and I drop it down into here. Can you see the oil? Pick it up. Mm. Yeah, like that. Okay, now I bring it down into there. Now you're going to have, before I drop the oil out of the bottom of the canister, I scrape it and blow it off, which is at the bottom of the canister, because there's going to be some small paint debris, maybe even sand. What you do is you get a big rag, a big rag, a big clean, like an old shirt. Say you have an old pair of pants, nylon shorts, something like that. Make sure that's a clean product. You can put it back. You put it over the funnel, like so. And you can filter out the particles that need to be filtered out easy enough. Because this oil is clean hydraulic oil, and there's only just a few small particles of debris in there and you would put that back into a dirty oil container. Or you could put it into the dirty oil container and strain it later. Your option. But that's how you can save two gallons of hydraulic fluid, which by the way are um, 500 pesos a gallon in the Philippines. So you're saving about a thousand pesos of oil by just taking oil that was in the machine already and um, and straining it out of the on the final process. Naturally, you would blow this all off, wipe it with a rag, because you're using this as a funnel from the bottom of the canister into the oil pan. So, without further ado, that filter is done. It took 30 hours. My buntai. 30 hours to get this job done total. So that's the end of this project here. Daisy, just take this oil pan and we're gonna move that, we're gonna clean that now. And uh, now we're gonna get this second filter set up. And, and that's it. These are some of the tools that you need. You'll need a vice grips or a large wrench to get the bottom oil plug off. This is the drain on the bottom. I also, watch yourself honey, I also mark the drain 
where the nut goes. And then I mark on the nut, so every once in a while I check under the machine to make sure there's no, it's not backing off. So thanks for watching our videos, and God day to everybody from Michael Fazio. In the Philippines, baby.